Click to Learn More, the show that sounds like clickbait, but is actually two dorks. I'm Lenny. I'm Dorm. And we're going to talk about something fun today. I said me last time. Dang it. I already did that goof. You. We're talking about you. Oh, I was like, <laughs> I was like, what? Uh, we're going to talk about lipstick. Ooh. Specifically the history of lipstick. Something I wear often. Often. Constantly, I think. Wearing Probably. it right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, My I'm, real lip color is blue. Because <laughs> I'm dead inside. That That's why we get along so well. <laughs> yeah, I'm 900 and you're actually a zombie, yeah. a human zombie. That got dark really fast. Sorry. We just started the show. Yeah, kind of had to start on a downer. That way we can only go up. You can only go up from here. Yeah. So what is lipstick? It is mm-hmm. a usually wax-based <gasps> nice. tube <Okay>. of <laughs> coloring for one's lipple regions. You said lipple. I did. We're going to pretend that didn't happen. Lipstick is a common cosmetic product that contains pigments, waxes, oils, and emollients. They're called emollients, which uh, which is a substance that softens the skin. Mm. So that could be like a lotion or something like that. Normally like a chapstick, something like Like that, will will have something in it that will soften your skin. Gotcha. Not a lot of lipsticks are designed to moisturize. Mm. A lot of lipsticks will say, plus moisturizing, or they that will be in the advertising. So you don't necessarily pick up a lipstick and expect it to be moisturizing. It's not standard, but it might right. be there. Gotcha. Often, uh, and I, like, I personally do this, if you're going to wear lipstick, you'll put, like, a chapstick on beforehand because it's considered priming Yeah, so lips. I do this last time you were here. Yeah, so, it, and it's... Still... I did not know this. As a, <laughs> well, this is going to be interesting because I have a very... I've... I've been around women who have put makeup on, but mm-hmm. I've never really put... My little sister's put makeup on me before. Mm, like, gotcha. I've never really worn makeup all that often. I've also heard that you can put foundation on your lips. Th- the same foundation that you would put on your face, and it will hold your lipstick for longer. Huh. I, I can't verify or deny um, that okay. claim. Am I allowed to ask questions about other makeups? Yes and no. So I will tell you openly if i don't know okay um, about it so with foundation mm-hmm. what exactly is that the that's powder correct so it can be a liquid or a powder oh great yeah so foundation is you see the little bottles the little bottles yes, of foundation like skin colored stuff right right yeah so well skin colored is kind of lame because well like when rihanna just released her right she has all the colors of the rainbow like yeah. all of all different types of skin colors because a lot of What you'll find in, like, drugstore-based makeup, which is what I buy because I'm a cheap, horrible person, um, is, like, white. Slightly darker white. Mm. White with some pink in it. White with some tan in it. Like, there's not a lot of choices. Right. Um, So. Uh, Kim Kardashian released a line that's like that, too, correct? I don't keep up with her. I think. I don't know. I remember there being some backlash because it was very narrow in the selection. Oh, I know that Rihanna has gotten uh, just like a ton of praise from beauty bloggers. and and, She's just been phenomenal. But I, you know, spend like 15 bucks total on my face. Oh, you're just John Cena. So, can't see me when I do that. Um, (laughs) So, anyway. uh, Some also provide texture and protection to the lips. Uh, it's often, though not at all exclusively, worn by women. Sure. So it used to be more common for women to wear makeup and cosmetics in general, I guess. And now it's kind of going in the way of anybody can. And why not? Yeah, why not? Yeah, I think it's great. I, I do wonder, do you think that will ever, like, become the norm for everyone? Do you think, like, at some point everyone will start wearing makeup? Or not everyone, but mm-hmm. it'll be more commonplace for any sort of person so to we wear ca- makeup, we, makeup? We kind of touch on this a little bit in the research. Uh, in ancient Egyptian times, uh, you could tell people who were better off, like, richer, because they wore red lips or they hmm. wore, like, the eyeliner. Or they wore, like, that right, was a yeah. sign of somebody being, you know, you know, better than other people. So that hmm. th- that was kind of a, a status symbol. Like a classist thing. Yeah. And then, like... At any given point, like, lipstick has meant prostitution or it's Hmm. meant royalty. Hmm. So depending on the time, the era that it is, or depending on the region it is, it can mean different things. Kind of like when you talked about color theory and how color means different things, different places. It's kind of similar in that that aspect. Interesting. 
so some lipsticks also are also lip balms. So you'll have some lip balms which add color and hydration to your lips. And the reason that they do that is because your lip skin is different from the skin on the rest of your body. I've just noticed I've been very aware this entire episode of my lips. <laughs> See how there's nothing on them. So um, it doesn't have melanin. Like your lips mm-hmm. don't have melanin. And they don't have any hair follicles. So neither do your palms or the bottoms of your feet. So these are areas of your body that are susceptible. Right. And it's kind of like that's a softer area. You know, if you yeah. think about like somebody pinching you or like something getting stuck in those areas, like that's a softer area yeah. of your body, um, which is, you know, a I've little never, more tender. I've never known that my hand doesn't have hair <laughs> So, So that's what it has in common with your lips. Um, and your lips can get sunburned. They can, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They can get sunburned and they can peel. So a lot of chapsticks will have SPF built in. Mm. And a lot of lipsticks will naturally block light because they're darker colors, usually. Sure. I mean, typically. Um, and, like, your basic lip balm will normally help in some way block some light. Hmm. Um, and the basic color of one's lips comes from the underlying blood vessels. So some people have pinker lips or redder lips or a little darker lips, and it's all based on the blood vessels that you have under your lips. Huh, so that changes the that changes the color of your lips. Yeah. So various oils and fats are used in lipsticks. Okay. So olive oil, mineral oil, cocoa butter, lanolin, and petrolatum, which I don't know what that is. is I that just what goes into petroleum jelly, <laughs> I would I, I would assume so. I know that some people can use petroleum jelly to remove makeup. Huh. Like that my my mom it's like a degreaser, basically. my mom uses it to take her eyeliner off and it always huh. makes me feel like I'm gonna go blind so I never use it because it's so goopy and I can't have yeah, yeah. yeah blah, gross. I wonder. Um, sorry. I didn't no, you're fine. But that's interesting because almost all of those ingredients are in something I know a little bit better than lipstick, which is like beard balms and beard oils. Mm-hmm. Almost all of those are ingredients in those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if it's that similar like rehydrating yeah. of yeah that's interesting yeah a moisturizing thing and it's something that's going to be on your face for a long period of time mm. or you know at least for a couple of hours so you want something that's not drying because sure. if you have a lipstick that's drying like you're definitely going to pick up on that you know the first hour you've got it and you're not going to want to wear that again yeah. and you're not going to buy it again which is the main draw right yeah. so lead and other trace metals are also found in many lipsticks why so it's a byproduct. They don't put the lead in there. Gotcha. It kind of just naturally just occurs. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's kind of a shame. So it's impossible to know whether the metals are in the lipstick by looking at the ingredient list because they're not an intentional ingredient that's added. Oh, wow. It's an unintentional contaminant. Yeah. So they're trace metals that are naturally occurring and they accidentally get taken up with other chemicals that are used in lipstick production. That's cool. So at any given time, you could have lead, like trace amounts of lead in your lipstick and you'd have no way of knowing it. Right. Because it's not intended to be there. It's kind of like when something's made in a pro- in a um, in a place that also produces nut or soy items, mm. you might have trace amounts of that in your food and it's not intentional to be in there, but it kind of just happens because yeah. it's near it or it's in the air or whatever. And so that kind of, when I read that today, I was like, huh. <laughs> That's a little terrifying, <laughs> you right? You could put putting lead just right there just on right, your kisser. Just, right, <laughs> just, just mushing it right into right your mouth. Your face hole. You know, where important parts live. Yeah, like, that's wild. You kind of need that, I think. Uh, <laughs> lipstick is made from grinding and heating ingredients. So Makes heated sense. waxes are added to the mix for texture. Mm-hmm. And oils and lanolin are added for specific formula requirements. So some formulas are a little creamier. Some are a little, like, liquidy. And sure. A little, some are waxier. Some are a little waxier. And then the hot liquid is poured into a metal mold. The mixture is chilled, and then once it hardens, they're heated in a flame for like half a second to create a shiny finish and re- remove imperfections. If you've never watched them be made, like you've never watched them pour lipstick into a mold and then like sli- like uh, it's like, they level it it's off, it, basically, it's so satisfying mm. because when they remove the metal mold, they're just like perfectly shaped, and then they just like pop them in and just like it's it's such a satisfying thing because it fits perfectly in the tube, it fits perfectly in the mold. It just, it takes all the boxes for me as far as... So, with with this sounds like, sort of like candle production, mm-hmm. where it's sort of the wax starts, you melt it down, you add what you want, you reform. Yeah. Um, so, that's sort of what I'm familiar with. But I do like the idea of heating it just enough to get it shiny. Mm-hmm. I think the chemical reaction there is kind of cool. Yeah. 
Where it's just like, all right, if it gets just hot enough before it starts actually melting. Yeah. And it's, and it's weird because that, to us, is an attractive quality. To have yeah. a thing that is shiny. And right. a lot of lipsticks are matte when you put them on. But we want something that looks shiny because that, to us, is like a new attractive thing. Yeah. So that's kind of like a, a play, you know, like a trick in your mind of like, oh, I want this thing because it's a shiny thing. Right. So the name... Originally, the name lipstick originally applied to the baton or the stick of material that's within the tube itself. But you would okay. s- like nowadays when you say hand me that lipstick, it's the whole thing. Right. So right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So it used to be just the material, the, the pigmented, the, tube. Mm-hmm, the, the pigmented material, the wax and, and color and all that stuff that was in the, the metal, they used to be metal, right. the metal tube itself. Now, a lipstick is a... Like the lid, the base. Yeah, the, that is all lipstick. Mm-hmm, that thing is a lipstick. I'm trying to think of another example of that. Um, I, I and we may get into this. Has lipstick always been applied in like a long, like like the tube we know today? No. Was it before sort of a, a yes. like a finger paint kind of thing? So we'll talk about that. Okay, okay. I didn't want to. <laughs> no, I didn't want to jump good. the gun, but I wanted to make sure I said that. Uh, and some are liquids that are applied by brush. So really? Some, some are there put are on by brush. Mm-hmm. Oh that. yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, just you wait, buddy. Just I, wait. The funny thing is that, like, I'm not even huge into makeup. Like, my main thing is, like, a lip gloss or possibly a lipstick occasionally. But talking about it and, like, the science behind it, the chemistry behind it is so fascinating to me. It's yeah, so really interesting. Cool. And the fact that, like, we're, we're going to talk about it, but they created what was kind of a gimmicky, like, mood lipstick in the 90s that okay. like it would change based on your ph balance and oh, like wild so you'd put it on and it would appear to be black and then you put it on and be like a purple or a pink depending on your ph balance for the day that's cool i didn't know about that i have some now that is mood lipstick and it's a dark purple but when i put it on it's pink but so we we swatched it which is what you when you put yes. it like on your arm okay so we tested it at work when i first got it and there i work with a girl who's more olive skin toned and it was like a brighter pink on her Hmm. and then a couple of the boys like put it on their arms and it was like a completely different color and then on me it's kind of like a pinkish purple that's cool so it 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 really i don't i don't have any scientific evidence to back up the claim that it's ph balance affects it i think it's all to do with like your under your 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 skin tone and like your the colors of your skin i think that that's that's all that it is um so there's a difference between lipstick and lip gloss which is which is that lipstick is normally highly pigmented. It's got a lot more color to it. And it. Okay. it normally provides more full coverage. So normally a lipstick helps define the mouth. So you can mm-hmm. kind of like... Draw with it? Kind of, yeah. So you can like... you can Normally you can look at somebody and know if that's a lipstick or a lip gloss. A lip gloss is going to be more sheer at first. There's not a lot of um, full coverage lip glosses. And they're kind of, they're kind of, um, they're kind of, they're see-through, they're a little more shimmery, whereas your lipsticks are going to be kind of, like, bold. Mm. And they're kind of going to be... So that was going to be, like, I thought my reasoning of lipsticks are darker and Mm. glosses are, like, shiny. Mm -hmm. That's basically kind of true a little bit? A little bit, yeah. So you can have very, like, bright pink lipsticks. In the 70s, they were super into white lipstick. Yeah. Um, So you can, you can... You can definitely have that. You can definitely have a, a, a lighter coverage lipstick. But for the most part, you're going to have something that covers on one go over mm, a lot more. You're going to you're gonna need multiple layers to build up an actual base, usually with a lip gloss. Um, so lipstick is like acrylic, lip gloss is like watercolor. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. To, to put it in your, your oil, I guess. Lipstick's nerdy oil. art terms. Sorry. Yes. Uh, many formulas of lipstick are matte and creamy to the touch, but they provide yeah. a luminous finish. Hmm. What did you say? I said, yeah, they are. I said creamy to the touch. Oh, you made it gross, didn't you? Some guy named yeah, Matt they are. was real hype about that. <laughs> matte and creamy. Yeah, mm-hmm. Matte and creamy. He's Matt like... <laughs> yeah. yeah that's can you repeat the last part again? Because um, like, <laughs> you dunked on me. I dunked on you. Uh, they can provide a luminous finish. Some have the shine of a gloss. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Are you wearing a lip gloss or lipstick? I'm right wearing now? a lip gloss okay, right that was now. Be my guess. Yes. Okay. So I normally tend to go the way, like on stream, I'll do lipsticks because they last longer mm. typically. 
um, lip glosses tend to be there and then gone. And a lot of lip glosses have shimmer or have like glitter or something in them. And they normally go over top of a lipstick, whereas a lipstick Ah. is normally worn, not, I don't want to say normally, but can be worn alone and be longer lasting than a lip gloss will be by itself. I have another question. Yeah. Is, so like a lip gloss going away, right? Is Mm -hmm. that because the skin on your lip is absorbing it? It can, or it's just that like you're licking your lips or Mm -hmm. you're like... Like, a lot of lip glosses can be sticky, and mm. so when that happens, you, you'll you kind of, like, rub your lips together more subconsciously, like, not being aware that you're doing it. Sure. Um, drinking things will make it go away faster. Um, I have a matte lipstick that is liquid that stays on no matter what, even when I try to remove it. Oh, it's sh- miserable. Geez. It's that pink one that I showed you that was oh, matte yeah. that just, like, stuck. And I was like, yeah, it's it going to be... It was on this part of my hand for, like, four days. I told you. I showered every day. It was yeah. just there. I was like, you're going to have to scrub this. <laughs> Good luck. Like, I have drunk... Oh, yeah. I was in a meeting, and I noticed it. I was like, <laughs> that's from three days ago. <laughs> Why am I still just pink? just speck of pink on I my, ate too much shrimp. My hand. I ate too much shrimp. That's what happened. <laughs> Turned pink. That's what happened. <laughs> um, And then, yeah, lip gloss is more sheer... More shiny, yeah. typically. If you're going to take anything away from this, lipstick, full coverage. This is how you impress the ladies. Oh, I can see that you're wearing a lipstick because it's full coverage. And then ah. she'll say, how'd you get in here? And then you say, I love you. And then you, and then you say, <laughs> please, Goodbye. Deborah, take me back. And then she says, listen, Daniel, we've been through this. It's been 10 years. It's been 10 years. Get over it. <laughs> Give me your key and get out. <laughs> and then that's how you uh <laughs> that's, really that's how you relive your memories of Deborah and Daniel. So <laughs> that's how that goes. That was funny. Oh god, I can see my laugh is a waveform and it's awful. <laughs> you put my cackle on <laughs> on Twitter, so I don't want to hear I, it. I did do that. <laughs> So let's talk about some history of lipstick. Let's do it. So we're gonna we're basically let's gonna do it. <laughs> nope. Nope. Bad. You did it bad. You just stick with the non <laughs> Stick? Yes. Uh, we're gonna Don't gloss over that. <laughs> I'm done. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over this whole situation. So balmy in here. We're gonna go back to the beginning and then we're gonna work our way up uh, through the decades to modern times. Okay. What decade are we starting at? Because this could take a while. It's going to take a while. 1720. Um, <laughs> I don't want to say you're right. Oh, no. But, okay, good. Um, so it's believed that ancient Sumerian women okay. and men cool. were likely the first to invent and wear lipstick. And this was about 5,000 years ago. It's a long time. It is a long time. So we, we think that these ancient peoples were the first people who invented and wore lipstick okay they used to crush up gemstones and they decorated their faces and mostly around their lips and their eyes with the gemstones cool. so it was it was basically nothing like the lipstick we know right now right so it was very it was decorative and it was very ornamental okay i would say yeah. it was it was pro- most likely i mean the written is crushed up jewels it had to be like people that could afford them sure yeah um they just have crushed up jewels lying around <laughs> right that's just not just a thing the ancient egyptians like our girl cleo miss cleo yeah, miss cleo. cleo as she's known miss, uh, did you just make a miss cleo joke in 2018 whatever do you mean uh she and i are like this uh yes sir. <laughs> that was good you're uh, lucky i get that i know that predates See? me anything it does because it was like it almost predates me god and nothing predates me. Is Cleo still alive? No. She's still kicking? No, she passed over. Can we call, can we call her now? <laughs> what was her number? I have no idea. 1-800-GIVE-ME-YOUR-MONEY-FOR-A-SCAM. 1-800-GET-CLEOED. <laughs> oh. Oh. get egypted. No. Oh. Get oh, egypted. Get egypt! Get egypt! Yes! We got there. We got there. there. Look how excited my waveform was for me when I found <laughs> out how good my joke just was. Okay. So, ancient Egyptians crushed up red bugs. You look like I was going to punch you. You look scared. Well, I didn't know what you, you paused. They crushed up red bugs. Bug. Bugs. And put them on their lips. Ew. Yeah. Because it created the a red color. Well, yeah. I feel like there are better ways to do that, Egyptians. Oh, definitely. Find some red flowers. We're going to kind of get off topic for a second. But they also 
Egyptians. Yeah. Did good stuff. Did yep. crazy stuff. Yeah. Used to put crocodile dung in their lady bits to avoid oh, getting pregnant. This. To avoid getting pregnant because they thought it would stop them from getting pregnant. It didn't. Didn't. Still had babies. Don't put stuff. And also put, crocodiles came out. And also baby crocodiles with, came out with human heads. Oh, no. That's what the Sphinx was. And that's how we got the Sphinx. Look what... And then its nose fell off. And then one of them did good and it was the Great Sphinx. Then, this is out of control. <laughs> uh, they wore... They, being the ancient Egyptians, not the Sphinx, wore lipstick to show... The plural, the Sphinx. <laughs> the Sphinx. To show social status rather than what some would consider a display of gender. Um, right. I, I say that because a lot of people are going to say that women wear makeup or women wear lipstick. People wear lipstick. Get yeah. over it. Yeah. It's 2018, Grandpa. Um, I can't finish that. <laughs> the dye they used was extracted from seaweed and iodine. Okay. And resulted in serious illness. Yeah, I was going to say, it doesn't sound like a good combo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Bug, so not super great. Iodine. Yeah, not super great. So a lot of people got sick. Okay. But they looked but good they looked doing bitchin', it. Yeah. They looked real great. They looked rich <laughs> AF, but they were miserable. Oh, dead. They got, probably got a cool tomb out of it, though. They definitely Egyptians got a cool tomb. known for their cool tombs. <laughs> yep. That's, what, sure that's the only thing they're known for. Yep. You're and absolutely the way right. They walked. <laughs> I don't want to laugh. You make me mad because you say something that's really funny, and I try not to laugh, and then I hear you. I, I hear you do your little giggle next to me, and it makes me laugh. All right. <laughs> also, this is upsetting. Uh-huh. The first forms of lipstick that had a shimmering aspect or some kind of like pearlescent aspect to them okay. were developed using a substance that was usually found in. Do you want to guess? Semen. Gross. Fish scales. Aw, <laughs> oh, that's not as bad as I was expecting. Okay, you mentioned crocodile dung as a birth control. I didn't do it. I didn't do the semen. <laughs> it wasn't me, officer. I didn't do it, the it semen. It wasn't me, sir. They were... Why is this in the 20s? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're in ancient Egyptian times. So what are we doing? You know, Muggsy, the great pharaoh. Yeah, you know, the great pharaoh <laughs> of the 1920s. Give me my onk. Take my cat, please. Oh, no. What happened? <laughs> Take my cat, please. Er, can't get no respect. No respect. <laughs> Why is it Rodney Dangerfield? I told you I don't know it what I'm... It was Andy Youngman for a second, then it was Rodney Dangerfield. I don't know what I'm doing with my life or with this podcast <laughs> right now. I don't know what's going on. All right. We're going to get back on track. All right. Solid lipsticks. I like the idea that we can just cut out all the parts where we goof. Oh, we're not cutting it out. No, no, no. But, like, I'm saying, like, if we did, it would be an actual podcast episode. Oh, sure, yeah. (laughs) But, like, an actual educational podcast (laughs) episode. Unfortunately, what you get is this version. Yeah, how far... It's funny because, like, we could make... Like PBS, mm-hmm. and then we can just make like the Click goofiest to learn crap. Yeah. yeah, and we do that I, one. Yeah, we do that one. That's the one that we do. Yeah. Um, solid lipsticks were invented during the Islamic Golden Age. Okay. And were perfumed sticks that were rolled and pressed into special molds. So they were perfumed, which I think is interesting. I like that idea. Yeah. So I th- I thought that was interesting that they not only created the first like actual sticks. Yeah. But that they were perfumed. I liked that. So when was this golden age? You know? So, uh, I mean, it was after the Silver Age. So, it's pretty important. Not. The most important ingredient in lipstick is nanya. Do you know what nanya is? Nanya beeswax. Thank you. It's beeswax. It's beeswax? Okay. It's beeswax. I wrote that joke in my notes. <laughs> so, so I saw you do this the last time. I saw like a one line. I was like, she didn't just write. I wrote it. Oh, one yeah. line I facts. write jokes into my... Scripted her joke in. Yeah. Because if I don't remember to say it... How will you get to hear my hilarious goofs? I have to remember to put them in my notes. Now, here's the thing. Beeswax was popular in lipsticks made in China over a thousand years ago. And they were designed to protect the skin of the lips. So they knew, like, hey, beeswax, that's going to protect your lips. We like the lips. We like it. Keep them We don't like them burned. Keep them good. Keep them good. Keep them clean. (laughs) Keep them clean. Keep them not burned. Put them out there. Beeswax, go. So that was pretty much exactly, that was word for word what they said. Cool. Um, <laughs> it's a quote. <laughs> mm-hmm. A bit later, scented oils were added to them, which was designed to give the mouth a more enticing factor. Dig it. And to this day, there's still some lipsticks and lip glosses that have scents or flavors. So oh. you can also find flavored chapstick. Yes. There's a Dr. Pepper flavored chapstick. Big fan. Bonnebel, I think. Bonnebel, mm. Dr. Pepper. That was my jam. Was that the Smackers? 
Yeah, they have Smackers and Bonnebel. Oh, it might have been Smackers instead of Bonnebel, but good God. They tasted delicious. Mm. It was unfair. Does that just make you want... I've never worn a a, a flavored chapstick Mm. or anything. Does that make you just want to go like like lick your lips all the time? Kind of, but kind of not because you can smell it too. Like you can smell it throughout the day and it's it's kind of nice. a, a pleasant scent under your nose. Yeah, I mean, if you're... So I have a um I have a lip gloss at home that's like mint scented and mint flavored and it's I mean like it's kind of nice to have that extra backup of like oh I'm not sure if my breath smells bad mm. but I have a mint well, lipstick lip on. yeah awesome. I have a mint lip gloss on so I'm confident in at least one part of my life <laughs> yeah. so so that's pretty nice I guess uh, <laughs> lip colorings have been used in puberty rituals so in in Australia. They've been used in puberty oh, rituals. What do you mean by a puberty ritual? Like a quinceanera kind of thing? Kind of. You're you're no longer a child. You are now a woman. Gotcha. And this your lipstick, this color of your lips is representative oh, of the fact that you are now, you are now a woman. Mm-hmm. In 16th century England, Queen Elizabeth I started a fashion trend of bright red lips and stark white faces. And that stuck for a while. And that hung Liz out. Liz was a trendsetter. She was, legitimately. Uh, and only upper class women and male actors wore this type of makeup. So male actors wore oh, the white. Oh, because this was before women could act, right? They played they women on stage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And the lipstick was made up of beeswax and red stains from plants. So we were still kind of like figuring out. Getting there. Yeah. So we used bugs. We used plants. We're still trying to figure out this dye yeah. situation. Like we're still trying to figure out a way to properly pigment lipstick and keep it on your face. But it's interesting that these have these were mostly red lips. Mm. Throughout history, it seems that red lipstick has been the most prolific color and the most attractive color. Yeah. And that, I thought, was was an interesting yeah, aspect. Yeah, it's funny that it stuck there and mm-hmm. it just kept going. And I told you this earlier, red lipstick has its own storied history. And I could do an, another episode completely on just, like, red lipstick and huh. its history throughout the world. But I thought it'd be more interesting to focus on lipstick as a... In, as an entity, like sure. as as its place in society, start wide and then narrow yeah, down and then too. and then narrow down absolutely. Um, so most of the 19th century saw a slightly more prudish approach to makeup. Uh, normally, prostitutes and actors were more likely to openly wear makeup, so that this was considered to be brazen and uncouth. Okay, because these groups of people were considered to be marginalized groups, like not very gotcha. well accepted groups yeah. of people. Uh, and normally respectable women didn't wear red lipstick. Hmm. They did not wear. So what cho- what caused the change? To. From royalty mm. to the uncouth. So what's interesting in that to me is that you, if you wore red lips, you were either royalty, which was obvious by your dress. Yeah. Like what you, your attire, what you were wearing, or you were a prostitute. It was two extremes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or you were an actor. Right. And that was considered to be a job that was lowly or, huh. like, not really... That's interesting. Yeah. And it, it's kind of a shame because I feel like that's it's an artistic expression right, of yourself. Yeah. And that's what makeup is. That's what cosmetics are. It, it's some kind of, like, unique personification of your personality. And to be considered negatively for that is a shame. Yeah, it's trash. <laughs> it's trash. That's true. Um, it's important to note here that many makeups included lead at this time, and it made it's lead again. yeah, and it made many people very sick. Yeah, as lead it tends to do. Mm-hmm. So a lot of women who were in the upper classes wore this makeup that was killing them, or they would like combine their makeups on lead plates, like or lead little lead. Oh sure, yeah. So this was like when they thought tomatoes were poisonous. Have you heard of this? No. So they used to cut tomatoes on these lead plates, but the acid oh. in the tomatoes would would cause the the lead in the plates to like some kind of chemical reaction in the lead in the plates and then they would eat the tomatoes and people were getting really sick and they were dying and people thought that tomatoes were poisonous that's really cool because of their lead plates that's a great story so there's an extra little bit of information in the lips that you didn't think you were getting in the lipstick episode (laughs) you're welcome get dunked on (laughs) get dunked on get knowledge dunked Allie yeah Yeah. no nope ah tried it Allie, oops. Because <laughs> oh, you messed up the joke. Because you messed up the joke. Uh, that's uh, good. The first commercial lipstick was invented in 1884 in Paris, which is not a huge surprise. No. Like, that no. kind of makes sense to I me. Paris makes sense. I think of perfume. I think of cosmetics. That's kind of something that's 
that's Parisian in nature yeah. to me. It's it's a beautiful thing, and it, a lot of beautiful things come from Paris. It was covered in silk paper and was made from deer tallow. Do you know what tallow is? No. It's a rendered form of fat. Okay. So they were putting... I was going to guess bone marrow, but... <laughs> well, that's close. Yeah. They were putting deer fat, castor oil, and beeswax on their lips. Bef- that really doesn't make... That doesn't that gross, though. I get I mean, that, that, like, that. that kind of makes sense. And I think a lot of stuff nowadays, like, in your makeup and in your lipstick in general, is probably not great to have on your face. Mm. Like, in general, it's not super great. Right. Um, and then before this, makeup was just created at home. Like, lipstick was just created at home. Really? Yeah. So, so it's they like would your own personal... Take a little bit of beeswax, take a little huh. bit of whatever, we heat cool it, mix it up. So a lot of people nowadays on Etsy and Pinterest and whatever else are making their own lip glosses and chapsticks right. and all this stuff with beeswax and dyes and... Yeah, because it's kind of a low barrier for injury, right? Like, mm-hmm. all this stuff is pretty common. Yeah. I mean, I've done that before. I've made my Have own... Have you really? I've made my own lip gloss, yeah. That's cool. Beeswax and mint and, um, like, a perfumed scent, was whatever. I didn't eat it. No, I mean, was it good in usage? <laughs> yes. Was it a good lip gloss? Gotcha. <laughs> Did it... your lip gloss be popping? It was popping. I'm, just, I'm very sad it took us half an hour in the episode you know, to I make thought, a little See, reference. here's what, this is the problem. I didn't put it in my notes. Ah, if I would have put it in my notes, would have this so joke would have happened a lot earlier and probably would have been a lot faster. Yeah. And funnier. Um, True. In the 19th century, lipstick was colored with carmine dye, which which was extracted from scale insects that are native to Mexico and Central America. They live on cactus plants. Wow, that's a very specific Mm -hmm. sort of dye then. Yes. So the color was considered unnatural and theatrical. Ah, So it was a very bright, like, mm -hmm, kind of like, I want to say like clownish red. So, yeah. And because of that, um, and the fact that it was kind of expensive to produce it wasn't an everyday kind of look it wasn't right. yeah it, it was kind of a um oh okay so is this where like putting on the the sort of bright red lipstick to go out and to a gala that kind of thing is that where this stems from you think this might have started there Maybe from the royalty i guess too so this one specifically like mostly actors and actresses wore it huh. and i think oh, that was kind of a like I'm on stage, it's and you need to and... you need to be able to see me from the back. Sure. They always say to to paint for the back row. Huh. Yeah. That's in a the cool, in the yeah. theater, you paint for the back row, so you want them to be able cool to phrase. see you as well. A lot of drag queens will say that paint mm. for the back row. Uh, Trixie Mattel says she paints for the drugstore down the block. <laughs> um, that's good. It's very very clever. Yeah, I like that. In the early 1890s, it was it being carmine was mixed with an oil and wax base that gave it a more natural look, which made it more acceptable for everyday use. Gotcha. Now, at this time, it was sold in paper tubes, kind of small papers and small pots. So think of like a little lip gloss pot, yeah, yeah. normally with like a little lid on it. Yeah. Um, and I thought this was interesting. The Sears Roebuck catalog is the first catalog to offer rouge for lips and cheeks. Huh. So it was the first place you could buy it. Wholesale. Like basically. wholesale in a, in a catalog. That's was cool. Was Sears Roebuck, which I thought was interesting. There's um, a lot of stuff that like just was in Sears Roebuck that's wild. Like to, the roller skates they used and yeah, stuff. Like it's really cool. To look back on, on that, like it used to be like you could get a washer or you can get sure. a cardigan. Like yeah, <laughs> it was like, yeah, wait a minute, wild. what? There's all kinds of different stuff in here. Fashionable American women considered lipstick acceptable by 1912. So this was this was kind of okay. the time in America where it was like, okay, I'm going to wear lipstick. It's acceptable for me to wear lipstick. And despite the fact that there was an article in the New York Times which suggested that it be applied cautiously, as in, don't overdo it, ladies. <laughs> That's funny. Don't get too wild out yeah, there you with can your use lipstick. lipstick. But, whoa. but watch it. Is all that right. Mean by a man? I mean, most likely, right? right? Like, yeah. let's, let's, be, let's honest. be honest. Let's be honest. Most likely. Um, it began being sold in cylinder metal containers by 1915. The first okay. swivel up tube, which is what we know today. The push pop. Mm, well, okay. So the swivel up is you turn it. it yeah. mm-hmm, and it was patented in Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, wow. Okay. Which I was like, oh, I'm right next door. All right. Yeah. Um, before this, the women had to use their fingernail to move the lipstick to the top of the tube. So that so would have been, that would have been more push pop. So it, it was, there was a, there was a little bar on the side and you would put your fingernail in it and you would oh, like push it up mm-hmm. and gotcha. you'd have to actually like push it up as it went, as it lowered down, which I mean, made sense at the time, right? Yeah. Until I mean, there were some deodorants that did that like not that long ago. Until they released the swivel when they didn't have to yeah. worry about it yeah. anymore. 
Um, so the art of photography began making lipstick acceptable among women in everyday life. Mm. So the more photos were taken of women, the more they were seeing like, hey, I actually really like how I look in this lipstick. Uh, so Elizabeth Arden and Estee Lauder began selling lipstick in their salons. So they started actually having it. Like the women would step out of the salon feeling great. Got yeah. a new hairdo. I look wonderful. What would top this off? Some lipstick. I have, so, I have a point to make here. Yeah. I wonder mm-hmm. if photography sold it because red when you turn it black and white goes very dark mm. and it would contrast well with their lighter skin mm-hmm. considering the people at the time um and like that contrast i wonder if that's what popularized it and it would still stand like, out the bougie people yeah yeah it would still stand out as something that would be because if you were having your photograph taken in like 1915 you were probably pretty bougie anyway yeah i mean somebody that's going to be able to get like to afford getting their photo taken in the early 1900s is, uh, I feel like they're probably stuck up. Yeah, like snotty. Like real butts. Yeah, like right before Gilded Era, sort mm. of. Like we're just real jerks. Yeah, just real buttholes. Like, <laughs> just like real... Buttholes wore lipstick. Just like, the, just like real creeps. Just like real creepos. Uh, during the Second World War, the metal tubes that they used for um, lipstick were replaced were scrapped, yeah. mm-hmm, by plastic and paper ones. Yeah, because they needed the metal. Yeah. So petroleum and castor oil, which were normally found in lipsticks, were needed during the war effort. So during this time, lipstick okay. was a little scarce. Sorry, I totally thought needed as in like dough. Oh! And I was like, wait, where is this going? <laughs> what? What? Yeah, no, that makes sense. Gotcha. <laughs> They're using it for yeah, they, they, machine lubricant. Yeah, they like were that. needed for more important things. So lipstick fell by the wayside. Sure. Lipstick is not as important as making sure that your guns and machinery works. There's a lot of inter- there are a lot of interesting markets that collapse with World War II because of the just need for metal. Uh, a lot of pre World War II bicycles are super rare. Oh wow! Because most of them were, we're scrapped. scrapped for <gasps> machinery. So like if you see like a, a bicycle from you know that's the somebody that didn't teens, that then... didn't want their country to win the war. <laughs> right, or they just stored it away and. Take. Because they didn't want the government taking win. my bikes. <laughs> they didn't want the country to win the war. I see how it Thanks is. Thanks, Obama. Thanks, Obama. Because of World War II, women were working in engineering and scientific research yeah. now. Yeah. And Hazel Bishop, an organic chemist who worked out of New York and New Jersey, created the first no smear or long lasting lipstick. Nice. The tagline for this. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Was, it stays on you, not him. Oh hell yeah. <laughs> Get it, Hazel. Well, that's a little heteronormative, but yeah, I mean, I mean for the, the time, time for the still t- kind of yeah, badass. at the time it was World War Two. It was it was pretty cool because it's like you're gonna be kissing. We know but you're, you're dirty. Gonna be looking good. Yeah, we know you're getting dirty. Yeah, yeah. We know you're dirty. Get on out there and be dirty. Don't worry about it. And you'll look good. And you'll look good the whole time. You're welcome. That's me. HB. Sign, <laughs> sign me. HB. It me. HB. It me. HB. It me. HB. It me, HB. Uh, another form of... Me, HB, with a PhD. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Wait, I just thought of like, yeah, you know me. She also me. invented rap, apparently. She did. It's another nugget of information you got from the lipstick episode. Everybody skipped oh it. Oh my god, her what? name's Hazel Bishop. What if her rap name was Hey Bish? <gasps> That's my drag name now. <laughs> Thank Hazel you. Hazel Bishop or Hey Bish? Hey Bish. Hi, I'm Hey Bish. Hey Bish. <laughs> That's great. Stop it. Mm. Nobody, TM, 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 TM. TM, Nobody, TM, 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 Nobody TM, TM. take it. Another form of semi-permanent liquid formula was invented in the 1990s and is called a lip stain or liquid lip color. Okay, I've heard so, of lip stain. So these are really interesting. Lip stains, I remember when these came out in the 90s uh, as a 40-year-old. Um, they used to come out with, there were two, I think this was CoverGirl specifically, had okay. a, a lip stain tube of color and then it came with a, and it was drying. So then they knew it was drying. So it also came with a little chapstick that was just designed like in the same uh, the same two packaging, and you're getting a Shampoo two for one deal. Yeah. When really the thing you're putting on your lips is drying them out. You have to have this thing because <laughs> yeah. it's miserable. We messed up. We messed up. It's bad. Um, but they made it look like you were getting a great deal for it. Gotcha. When in reality, you could have just used a no smear lipstick and been fine. Cover girl. It stays on you, not him. But it was also or, a new or thing, or whoever, yeah, on um, you and not the other person. Don't <laughs> on kiss, you and not them. Don't, yeah, but not dogs. Like, don't kiss dogs. Uh, well, unless it's like a cute little like, like on the head, maybe. Yeah, but not like. Rom- don't, don't go make out. Don't with your dog. romantically kiss a dog. I need that on a shirt. Don't, don't romantically, romantically kiss, kiss a dog, dog. Liddy. Normal, normal pecs. Okay. <laughs> normal in parentheses. 
head kiss is fine. <laughs> head kiss is a-okay with a little like emoji like with my little face like chef's kiss. Oh, next I to need it. to do an episode about the origin of this. It's really you cool. You really do. It's really, really cool. Because I know nothing about it or most of anything. Um <laughs> so I have I have a lipstick or I guess it's like a lip color that is bright red and it goes on and then it dries in kind of like a shell. Okay. And then you peel the shell away. What? And the color stays on your lips. You've got the turtle shell of ice cream for lipsticks. Basically. That's so cool. And it's called like vampire bite or something because it's oh. very red. But And it goes on dark, dark red. But when it comes off, it's kind of like a lighter red. It's really interesting. I bought it just to see what it was all about because yeah. it was just like a peel off lip color That's or whatever. So weird. And it's basically like they call it like a lip tattoo. Mm. And it just, it'll stay on your skin or stay on your lips. I want to put this on. It's it's kind of wild. It's really interesting. I feel my lip shell. So they, <laughs> so so it gets kind of itchy in in yeah. a way that anything that you put that's like wet on your skin when it starts to dry will, and it's hard to like not pull at it because it's kind of gooey and you can't push your lips together while it's mm. on there. It has to dry, but um. So just in like. Uh, so yeah, so you're just like, just like duck face constantly. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say for those of you who are listening <laughs> to the audio, we're just making duck faces. <laughs> it's just duck faces. Uh, lipstick only existed in a limited number of shades in the early 20th century. So they okay. had, like, red and dark red. <laughs> yeah, red they, and redder. Yeah, red and redder. They Less red. Yeah, they they didn't really have, like, when you think of it today... Red not. <laughs> red, not red. Um, they, they didn't have it as well of a, a selection as they do now. Sure. Um, the most popular was a dark red, which was big in the 1920s. Okay. Uh, flappers wore... I wonder if that was also because of photography. See, maybe. And flappers wore dark red lipstick to kind of, like, show off their independence. Gotcha. They did this whole, like, I don't have to listen look to you. Look how I can Look how lipstick. fancy I am. Screw you, New York Times. Look, York yeah. Look at my cool outfit. Look at my cool feather. Yeah. Look at my cool lipstick. And look at me, I'm awesome. Look at me, I'm going to drink illegal alcohol. I'm going to go flat now. I'm going to go flat. And then they, and flew, then they away. flew away. So that's how flight was made. Thanks, flappers. Thanks, flappers, for making flight. God, there's so much information in this episode. We're I'm really, really proud just of us. It. Um, <laughs> it was deemed acceptable during this time to apply lipstick in public and during lunch, but never dinner. Weird. That was a no-no. That was like a faux pas. That's very, do not very put, uncouth. Do not put your lipstick on at the dinner table. But at lunch Deborah. or in public, yes, Deborah. Deborah. I don't want to call Deborah out again, but Deborah. Yeah, Deborah's had a rough episode. God, Deborah. Deb's had a rough episode. Terrible. She's the worst. Uh, in the 30s, lipstick was seen as a representation or a symbol of adult sexuality. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> okay. All right. Well, you're going to feel real gross after this. Oh, no. Teenage girls. No. <laughs> wore lipstick to assert their womanhood. Mm. So teenage girls wanted to say, yes, I'm, I'm a grown up now. I'm a grown up. Right. I'm going to wear red lipstick. That's all teenagers want to do. Right. Whereas adults saw it as rebellion. Hmm. As adults tend to do. Yeah. Um, a study in 1937 said that, good huh? Good I said year. Good year, probably terrible year. Probably a terrible year a for most year. people involved. Yeah. Um, over 50 percent of teenage girls fought with their parents over lipstick. That's awesome. So over That's half. A great stat. Over half of teenage That's girls so cool. surveyed said that they fought with their parents over lipstick. Which I love. I think is I, an interesting. Thing. I love the context of. It was, gosh, 80 years ago now, and teenagers were still fighting with their parents about letting them wear makeup like it's yeah i love that sort of mirrored reality something something that doesn't hasn't yeah. really changed yeah I, I remember being a little kid and by little kid i was like i don't know like eight mm-hmm. and i would go to school and my friends would bring their makeup i was allowed to wear makeup and they would bring it and we would put it on each other's faces and one day my mom told me the story where she came to pick me up because she, like, got off the day, or I, I think she got the rest of the day off, so she was like, I'm going to go get Liddy. Sure. And so she came to get me, and she said that she saw my eyelids before she saw me, because <laughs> I... That's a great line. Because I put so much blue eyeshadow yep. Why on. Why is it always blue? Why is it not, always blue for Always. Kids? It never fails. And it was, like, all the way up to my eye, like, my eyebrows, yeah. and it was, like, everywhere. Yep. And she said that I just, like, ran up, and she was like... What are, you, what are you doing? And I was like, nothing. <laughs> and then I got in trouble. Yeah. So by the mid-1940s... <laughs> my eyes were blue for a different reason. <laughs> and then I got... No. no uh, several teen magazines stressed the importance of a natural look in order to okay. catch a man. Oh. So during... Catch him. 
Yeah. So think about this. No. Girls, teenagers, I don't want to say girls, teenagers and young women had been wearing lipstick as a show of like individuality. And, oh, snap. And I'm a grown up now. Oh, that's interesting. And I'm an adult. And then all of the teenage magazines started coming out saying, no, you need to look more natural because men prefer a more natural look. When really it was stop rebelling. When really it was. Men like a subservient woman. That was the implication. That's wild. Right? So teens were warned that too much makeup could ruin their chances of popularity or a career. What? Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. The implication... this again? uh, This was in the 1940s, the mid-1940s. it's really late for this, it seems like. The implication set forth by this magazine was that teens who wore rouge and lipstick were likely going to be more promiscuous. So weird. Yeah. So if you saw a teenage girl, she's wearing red lipstick, she's wearing rouge, she must be what they called, quote, loose. Mm. Which is a shame. Because she's probably just trying to feel like an adult in yeah. a world that's constantly trying to put her down. Yeah. Um, which is sad. So even though more and more people were using cosmetics, it was still associated with prostitution as well. So more and more people are using cosmetics, more and more people are using lipstick, it's more widely distributed, and it's still considered something that is synonymous with prostitution. Mm. In the 1950s, Marilyn Monroe and Elizabeth Taylor brought back dark red lips. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Brought that right back into the limelight. So at this time, a survey revealed that around two-thirds of teen girls wore lipstick. So two-thirds of them were like, you know what? I don't care what you say. I'm going to wear my cool lipstick and I'm going to be, I'm going to be a grown up, and you can't change me, which is really cool. I think that's a really, a really interesting stat compared to the fact that their magazines and everything that they were reading was telling them like, you should go more natural. Listen, you need to be an adult. Look, (laughs) look up. Yeah. Be a pretty girl. Uh, And then we talked about in the 1960s and 70s In the 60s, white or nearly white lipstick was popular. They would also put concealer on their lips and just like, kind of like. Blend cover in. yeah cover That's up their wild. lips mm-hmm. so and they went pretty much counterculture shocker mm-hmm. but yeah sort of just subverted the norm which yeah which is interesting because like up until this point we've heard about like red lips being the biggest Making thing dark out. yeah dark red lips and now we're going white or we're going like completely just like block your lips out and that's something that's kind of like well you know what F nah. you, yeah. I'm going to be completely different, which, like you said, counterculture. Yeah. Um, so m- during this time, many lipsticks were matte, sheer, or very slightly shiny. Mm. They weren't, like, today we have a lot of different, like, a lot of sparkles and stuff like that in it. Right. Uh, and lipstick was associated with femininity. So you normally wore lipstick, like, a colored lipstick, and if you did so, you were considered more feminine. Mm. Um, if you weren't wearing lipstick, and this is a real... Honest to God, quote, it was suspected you were mentally ill. What? Or a lesbian. So if you didn't wear lipstick, Jesus. there's two there's options. There's something wrong with you. Yeah. Or you're gay. There's something wrong with you yeah, in right, some form. Right, yeah. There's something wrong with you if you don't wear lipstick. I mean, maybe you just don't like lipstick. Maybe yeah. you get it all over your teeth when you try to put it on. <laughs> maybe half the time you accidentally eat some of it. Maybe you're allergic. Maybe, yeah, maybe you're allergic. Maybe you just don't like lipstick. Maybe you just don't want to wear a lipstick. Maybe you don't want to wear it. Maybe it's gross and it gets all over everything, which is, uh, yeah. Society sucks. It's just a thing. So in, I hate the 70s. <laughs> in the late 1970s and into the 1990s, black lipstick became popular. Mm. So in the 1950s, it had been worn by actresses starring in horror films. So when right. it was like black and white, sure, black as and white movies, mm-hmm, they because they screamed a lot and they were yelling a lot and they needed something to offset pop that. The teeth. Mm-hmm. And they needed to off- <laughs> pop the Sorry, teeth. Sorry, that was bad phrasing. <laughs> They needed to offset that, so they wore black lipstick. Yeah. Uh, and then in the nineteen, the late nineteen seventies up until the nineteen nineties, it was more of a like, we're definitely going against what you have told us is beautiful. Right. Right. Like black lipstick is something that is the opposite of what you could would consider like pretty, as far as society is concerned. Um, 
So that was in part due to the punk and goth subcultures. Okay. So they, in the 1990s, sure. had a lot of black. Yeah, think, yeah. Like one of the references was Marilyn Manson, uh, who kind of like paved the way of like this androgynous kind yeah, yeah. of like anybody can wear makeup, anybody can wear lipstick. Did he though? I think that that was part of the thing because I remember like I growing think it up. About the Prince and Bowie. Yeah, I I mean it more along the lines of like black lipstick. Sure, yeah, yeah. Because in, in this culture. Specific. Yeah, gotcha. and in high school, I remember a lot of dudes that would show up wearing black lipstick, mm. and those long trench coats and stuff like that because that was like that culture at that time. Yeah. Um. So, oh, and then we talked about the mood lipstick. So sure. in the uh, mid nineteen eighties. It was sold um, by mainstream cosmetic companies. And so the quote is that this type of lipstick changes colors after it's applied based on changes in the skin's pH that supposedly reflect the wearer's mood. I I still stick to the fact yeah, that I'm I believe it's I believe that it's it's just whatever your underlying skin tone is. Sure. It brings it out. I I don't think that it changes based on your pH level. Um, now we're gonna get into the 1990s. Okay. And this this one specifically is really interesting to me because I remember this. I grew up in this. Okay. I, I remember this specifically because I remember the era of, like, lining your lips. Yeah, yeah, With a liner that was darker than your lip color. Right. So they would line their lips, like, people in my high school. Like, would, you would know the lip was lined. Yeah, yeah. Like, in a dark brown and then fill it yep. in with, like, a light brown so lipstick. I this, yeah. Never made sense to me, <laughs> but I totally, like, I can look back on that and be like, yeah, that's definitely a 90s thing. Yeah. So... In, it was believed that that was like possibly because of friends, like okay. brown brown shades yeah. of color were possibly because of friends. Um, also, the Rachel haircut, right? Being the like Rachel, a, a yeah, really you could just deal. go get the Rachel. The which Rachel, is awesome to me. In the late 1990s and into the 21st century, pearl oh. pearl shades, yeah, little baby, uh, pearl shades were very popular. So yeah. lipsticks were no longer strictly matte or semi matte. Mm semi-matte yeah. um they're shiny and contained like a lot of like pearlescent colors right. like they were kind of a big deal like, like remember... bubblegum sort of look. Yeah, yeah yeah like remember when they were like holographic almost yeah. like really bright shiny like i think we talked about this once before but like the um the bubble uh graphics that they did of like yes. web 2.0 yeah. of like everything's glossy and really shiny glossy and, and shiny and yeah. got stuck in your hair and was miserable um, in 2012, bright, bold lip colors became trendy again with yes. saturated colors like hot pink, neon, and orange. Right. So that was a big deal for a little bit. And yeah, then in 2014, how old were you? I was in late high school. <sighs> and then in 2014 and 2015, nude lipsticks came back. Yeah. <laughs> you got so Okay, so no, I like nude lipsticks. Sorry, that didn't sound like I was <laughs> just hype about being, people being naked, but no. Nude people. I do like nude lipsticks. I nude um... People. So they they tended to follow so that we went through this trend in 2014 and 2015 that was the less is more kind yes. of trend so like makeup was very soft and very natural yeah. uh, and so was your lipstick so your lipstick was like a nude or a you know whatever by the way nude lipstick like calling a lipstick a nude is an insult because not one there's not one group of people that have the same nude yeah. So calling a lipstick nude, nude. and making it light tan. Right, like is this not, generic thing. Is yeah. not nude to someone with a darker complexion. Right. So that's like back when the, the, the crayon was called like skin color or whatever instead of peach. Right. right. Please. Yeah. yeah. Which is annoying, but that's a whole nother topic. Yeah. Um <laughs> in late twenty fifteen and twenty sixteen, lip liquid lipstick, which applies like a gloss but dries matte, which is the Ooh. pink stuff yeah. that I had, um, became popularized with brands such as Anastasia Beverly Hills, which is how you say that. Uh, not those Anastasia. Are, not Anastasia, it's Anastasia. Okay. They do a lot of, like, uh, eyebrow stuff. They do gotcha. a, a lot of people pay top dollar uh, to look very pretty with mm. these with these items. I don't even look them up because I can feel the money <laughs> leaving my bank account uh, as soon as I Google it. It doesn't Anastasia with me. <laughs> oh, no. And I will say this. Okay. I, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to talk about lipstick or not today. And then I got to the final paragraph in this article. And I was like, you know what? Hit me with it. This is absolutely what I, what I want to talk about today. Because the final paragraph said, and I'm just going to read it as it is. Okay. Traces of lipstick, cosmetics, nail polish, or other smears could be found left on drinking cups, glasses, cigarette butts, and tissue papers at crime scenes. Yeah, I knew this is where this was going as soon as you said traces. Which may all be significant forensic evidence in the investigation of a crime, especially in cases such as a sexual assault, homicide, and in government or corporate-related corruption and controversies. So I read this and I was like, 
I'm good. It is me. It's my brand. It is my brand. <laughs> my brand. It is a me-based topic. Yes. So if you think about it, though, that makes a really good point because lipstick is going to hold DNA evidence. Sure. Skin flakes or spit or whatever. My favorite cereal. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I just yelled directly into the mic because of how much I hate the thing you said. <laughs> Blah. Various other methods of forensic lipstick analysis, which is a thing. That's awesome. Forensic lipstick analysis are used. For instance, a small amount of lipstick could lead to good comparisons in thin layer chromatography. So. What's chromatography? We'll talk about that on a ah, later episode. It's a tease again. Okay, dun, dun, it's dun, dun, definitely. Dun. Something to do with color, because chroma. <laughs> chroma. You got that one. You did. You did do a thing. Yeah. And my lips are sealed. Okay. I I wanted I to point it. out. <laughs> you get it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's possible to extract saliva DNA from the lipstick print. Like the which, band? Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> How welcome to click, click, boom. Just... Oh, no. Oh, no. That was so good. <laughs> So good. <laughs> a podcast from the podcast all about saliva. <laughs> Welcome to our saliva podcast. <laughs> our saliva cast. Oh. Sal- spit cast. Oh, oh, spit cast is good. It's good. God, don't encourage that. <laughs> um, <laughs> by comparing the composition of a lipstick smear with that of a victim or a witness, forensic scientists can demonstrate direct or indirect proof of contact of or a relationship between the plaintiff and the defendant. Sure, yeah. It's body stain, basically. Yeah, and also if you leave your lipstick on someone else's collar, you're cheating on. So, which never made sense to me because, like, when are you just gonna be like, oh? yeah, I don't, like, I don't how know. does that happen? I don't, I don't understand it's not that. Hot. It's not yeah. just like let me bite that collar though. Like, let me have that collar though. <laughs> let me, let me get your dry clean only shirt and <laughs> let put me holler my, at that collar. Let, <laughs> let me put my beeswax based. Let me put my crushed bugs. On let me put collar. my crushed bugs all over that collar, <laughs> boy. No, stop. Stop it. Deborah. God, again. Sorry, Deborah. De- Deb is just not having a good She's out. so disappointing is the problem. That anyway. was that was very cool. I learned a lot about something I knew very little about. Same, actually. Like, mm-hmm. I, I knew a little bit going into it. I knew that crushed bugs were, were <laughs> an aspect. <laughs> in my punk band. <laughs> crushed bugs. Crushed bugs are us. I knew that crushed bugs were included in, in early forms of cosmetics, especially lipstick. Um, yeah. And, like beetles like crushed up beetles and right. and pearl, they poor ringo fish scales yep ringo is in your lipstick you heard no, it here no, first don't make me a lipstick that sounded more like uh like yakko warner please don't please don't sue us united states panama <laughs> please don't sue no, it's us. canada united states canada mexico panama Haiti, jamaica Peru. no i'm gonna sue my warner brothers oh God, welcome to the last episode of Click to Learn More before we get hit learn before we get hit with a cease and desist. <laughs> <laughs> no, God, you're such a freakazoid. Anyway, that was a reference. That was get good. It? I liked it. And let's put a dot on that one. And <laughs> where can they find you, Dorm? Uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash dormtrees. Where can I find you, Liddy? At twitch.tv slash team Liddy. What do you do there? I stream. What do you do at Dorm Streams? I also stream weird. It's in the name, I guess. That's weird. Kind of... That kind of... I should have figured that out. Context clues, I think. Yeah. Also, you're on Twitter. Yes, as are you. Same thing. Dorm yeah, same Lady. thing. We make it easy to find us. Word. Oh, don't find us. Yeah, don't actually oh, physically Deborah? come here. Deb. So help me God, Deb, if you show up at my house again, Deborah. I will call the police this time. This time. Last time you got last time the last you time you used your get out of jail free card. I, you handed me one from Monopoly. Which I I ha- like, I, I, this is legally she binding. hand wrote an IOU. Yeah, and she was like IOU this arrest. the stalking, and I was like fine, right. fine, and I accepted it, but no longer, no longer. It wasn't even notarized. That oh, was my first mistake. Gotta give a notary public. This part was left in if Dorm's camera died. And I fully charged it, okay? It wasn't my fault this time. Hey, but don't leave this in, because I laughed really hard, really loud a second no, no, ago. No, I can edit the laugh out. Oh, okay. Because that's definitely going to blow some people's eardrums, because it was loud. But if this is the video, and you're just seeing, like, a black screen, or pictures of Gaffy Eddie, or Or maybe, like, a, just a... The video cut out. Yeah. Or maybe it's, at this point, it's just um this really cool screenshot of us looking, like, real cool. Uh, If that's the case... <laughs> the one we did earlier? No, don't put that one up. Oh, that's the coolest That's illegal. Though. We can't show people that we did that. No. Oh, my God. <laughs> what, what, what in your what mind? What illegal act did we photograph? We robbed that, we robbed that bank. Oh. 
God. Anyway, now there's vi- oh, there's audio evidence. Yeah, there's not video evidence. There's not, <laughs> no, there's here. not video evidence, which is why we're here. Uh, thank you so much for listening and or watching Click to Learn More. We appreciate you being here. Until next time, watch where you click. <laughs> Oh no, it's back!